What's up, everybody? It's Yi Young here with a Metal Gear Online news update. The following information comes from an interview between Japanese website 4Gamer and Metal Gear Online 3 creative director Kotaro Oki, which was then translated by Twitter user JunkerHQNet. The interview revealed a number of new details about the highly anticipated online multiplayer mode, starting with information about the game's launch. According to the director, while they are considering launching Metal Gear Online and the Phantom Pain simultaneously on the same date, that decision isn't final. In other words, there is still a chance that they may do something similar to what Rockstar did with Grand Theft Auto V. Launch the single player campaign first so people can get used to the game's mechanics, and then launch the online mode. But again, it's still up in the air. The interview also revealed details about the maximum number of players per match. The team at Kojima Productions LA is still working on finalizing this number, but their goal is to keep it somewhere between 12 and 16 players, so between 6v6 and 8v8. Some of you may have been hoping for 32 players, or 16v16, but keep in mind that Metal Gear Online is not a war game, it's tactical team operations. According to the director, having too many players in one match resulted in the loss of emphasis on teamwork, so they want to find a good middle ground. The game mode shown in the world premiere trailer did feature 16 players, 8 vs 8, but perhaps the maximum number of players will vary depending on the game mode. The game is also emphasizing teamwork through various features and mechanics. One returning feature is the ability to communicate with players using preset radio messages. This means that even those without a headset can talk to their teammates. Now, a new feature to this Metal Gear Online is MGS5's marking system, which according to the director is meant to replace SOP from MGO2. Using this feature, players can mark enemy players through the binoculars and other means just like in the single player mode, and this information is shared with teammates. He also noted that like in MGS5, gaining and sharing intel will be a key aspect to achieving victory. The director then proceeded by talking about maps. Online matches will not take place in large open world maps like the ones found in the single player mode. Instead, they will take place in smaller, self-contained areas. This was done in order to keep matches fast-paced and to allow for variety in terms of areas, terrain, and climate. And speaking of climate, MGO3's maps will feature dynamic weather like their single-player counterparts, meaning players may experience sandstorms or rainstorms in the middle of matches. However, they will not feature dynamic time, meaning that the time of day will not change throughout a match. The developers didn't think that was necessary since matches won't last very long anyway, at least compared to how long single-player missions can last. However, players can select different times of day prior to starting a match. Just keep in mind that the time of day will stay that way until the match is over. Another topic of conversation was rules and game modes. According to the director, players can expect to find both common and unique rules throughout MGO3. He used the team sneaking mode as an example, which he did confirm will make a return from MGO2. And like in MGO2, the attacking team will be equipped with non-lethal weapons and stealth suits, while the defending team will be equipped with lethal weapons. Unfortunately, the director didn't confirm any other game modes, but I think it's safe to expect typical ones like deathmatch and team deathmatch, as well as new and unique modes specific to MGO3. One small gameplay feature that was touched upon was the ability to take selfies. Those who saw the trailer may recall the section at the end showing Snake taking a selfie with Ocelot. The director confirmed that it wasn't just meant to be a funny gag, it's a feature that they are planning to implement in the game. The interview then proceeded with talk about how beginners can enjoy the game. The developers wanted to make sure that even those who weren't good at shooting could somehow contribute to the team. An example that the director gave was that beginners could stay back and use their binoculars to mark targets while advanced players could take point. It's good to know that the team is making MGO3 as accessible as possible. The interview concluded with talks about how MGO would be interacting with MGS5. According to the director, there will be certain elements from MGS5 that will affect MGO and vice versa, but they won't be anything that will affect game balance. The developers are trying to avoid forcing players to play one game to become more powerful than the other, with the goal being that players enjoy both individually for what they are. In other words, don't expect to receive some kind of special item or weapon for Metal Gear Online for completing Phantom Pain's campaign or anything along those lines. 
And that's all the new information that was revealed throughout the interview. Thank you for tuning in. Let our nation know in the comments below your thoughts on the new and returning features. And to be further updated on Metal Gear Online, be sure to join the nation by subscribing to Young Year. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much, and Young out.